Hey guys, I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. My name is Brady Dunnigan, and today I'm going to be reviewing Kelsey Timmerman's Where Am I Eating? So, first off, what's this book about? So, Kelsey Timmerman is an American author, and he goes to these five countries and learns about the origins of where we get some of our certain foods. So, he goes to uh, Nicaragua, he goes to China, he goes to Costa Rica, he goes to the Ivory Coast, and he goes to Colombia. And there he learns about some of the certain foods we get. So he learns about where we get our cocoa from, where we get our lobster, where we get our apples, where we get our bananas, and where we get our coffee. And he, the reason why he goes on this journey is because he himself is more conscious about where exactly do we get this food. You know, us as an American culture, we kind of take for granted where we get our food because since we're such a large economy, we don't really have that mindset of when you go to the store, where this food come from? All we see is, hey, there's apple juice, or hey, there's you know bananas. So he goes to these countries and basically learns, you know, who these workers are that provide this food for us. And along his journey, he learns that the culture that they have is not the same of our as ours. And so Kelsey Turman, he tries to make a point, and that point is that us as a culture, we take for granted that while food is just a small part of our lives, for these certain cultures it is their entire life from the point from where they're 15 and they have little to no education all the way to when they're in their 50s and 60s they're working on these farms that is their lifestyle that's the only career that they have in these countries and um, Kelsey provides a well detailed evidence of this because first off when he goes to these countries he doesn't just ask people how life is he goes in and he provides these first-hand encounterments that these people, you know, experience daily. So, for example, uh, in Costa Rica, he actually helps the day getting bananas with these workers. And at first, he's not even allowed a machete because these workers, they work their entire lives doing this, and they don't trust him with a machete because the work is that dangerous. Uh, second, when he's carrying these bananas, his back's hurting, his leg's hurting. And it's taken him an hour just to do the work of what a banana worker would get in 10 minutes. The second part of his argument that really backs it up is he gets these encounters from these workers and he asks them directly how their lifestyles are. So instead of taking the easy route and just asking the in a group, you know, do you work here? How's it been? He goes to these individual workers by themselves and he asks them more serious questions. That way, they, he gets the answers from them personally instead of from a collective group. Because if you ask from a collective group, whoever works the farms could, you know, uh, look down on them and make their lives even worse if they all answer truthfully. But since he was able to get one-on-one -on -one with these workers, he was allowed to have a more serious conversation and a more detailed analysis of how these worker lives are. So for example, with the group uh, in Costa Rica with the bananas, he talks to Juan and Ruby, and Ruby is his translator that used to work on the farms, but now she actually helps these workers by raising money for them. And Juan is an actual banana worker that's been working for the Campanero for 15 to 20 years. And he asks him a series of questions, and he gets a more detailed response from Juan. So when he asks him, you know, how do you expect life to live out for you? He says, I expect to basically work the rest of my life on this farm. And he asks him, if you could go back in time, would you work on the farm? He said, absolutely not. He would have left the country and looked for work somewhere else. So could you expect to get these answers from a larger group? Possibly. But would they take the risk of possibly being fired just because they're talking to an American author and actually giving their personal viewpoints? Probably, most likely in these cases where you know this work in these countries is the only work that they actually have. So I feel like that, that, to me, backed up his argument a whole lot better. That way we can actually get these farmers' viewpoints one-on-one -on -one and get a more serious answer. With him being an American author, does that necessarily say that he got the whole experience? No, because some of these work camps could have looked at it as there's an American who writes about what he sees coming to our plantation. We don't necessarily want to show him everything that happens here. So in Nicaragua, where he went to go on a lobster boat to go uh, scuba diving, he wasn't even allowed to go on the boat. So is that kind of a viewpoint to where 
that certain location in Nicaragua took the opportunity to tell him no. That way that he couldn't fully see the conditions that these workers work in? Probably. But that also kind of incites that there could have been other opportunities to where he missed out on because of the fact that he's an American author. And these work camps didn't want him to see firsthand exactly how bad these conditions go through. And that's where he kind of had to rely on these workers' viewpoints to where they could be misleading, but since he got the more personal one-on-one, -on -one, they are a bit more credible that way. They're not scrutinized. Uh, overall, I really did enjoy the book. It did provide a lot of evidence that I felt was credible enough to his argument. That way it shows that he does know what he is talking about. He's not just making up mumbo-jumbo. And the fact that he went to these countries by himself, no, no one else he knew, maybe some connections, but no one personally related to him, he took on a big chance on going to these countries. Because if anything were to happen, no one would have known. But he decided to get that chance by himself, and since he did, and now we have this book that provides us with these materials and these resources that show us, hey, maybe we need to look at how we actually value our food here. Overall, I did feel like Kelsey Turman did provide a well-rounded argument in this book. And if you are any more interested in finding out where we do get our food, definitely give this book a look up. And maybe you might become more self-conscious on where you get your food. Uh, that wraps up my review. As always, uh, I do recommend reading this book. Uh, thank you. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day.